Come on in, David Barnson. He's with the Barnson Group. He's the CIO thereof. David, tech companies uh, across the board now, they've been really beaten down. Is this a time to buy any of them? If you're talking about old, uh, new tech, cool tech, big tech, the stuff I've been talking to you about all year, Stuart, then no, it's not. Um, mm -hmm. I think that there are technology companies that don't belong in that sector, that are not FANG names, but are value names. Look at Cisco's results yesterday in a week where the market's down about 1,000 points, going up 4%, continuing to pay over a 3% dividend yield that they're growing double digits a year. They've repatriated $70 billion from overseas, and they are completely reinventing their company. I view Cisco in a totally different category than these overpriced behemoths like NVIDIA and F Facebook. Mm -hmm. NVIDIA is now down 43% in five weeks. Oh. This is the kind of carnage that I always felt these names were vulnerable to. And so at this point, I think they remain overpriced. You mentioned all the other political problems going on. It's not for us. Yeah, very interesting. All right, David, one more for you. As you know, I'm sure, Bernie Sanders has rolled out the uh, Stop Walmart Act. It would block big companies from buying back their own stock unless they pay their employees 15 bucks per hour. I don't like this. I don't think it's going anywhere, but I don't like it. On principle, I don't think politicians should be legislating what a workforce should earn. What say you? Yeah, I don't think it worked really well in the old Soviet Union either. And I, and I don't think it was very popular in Libya. Uh, Venezuela is not, not really excelling in such an idea. But this is not something that can be discussed only on a basic market and investment and economic level. This is something that gets to the core of who we are as a country and what we believe ideologically about free men and free markets. This is reprehensible policy, completely anti-American, and it won't accomplish anything. Any of what he's saying he wants done anyways. It's statism. It's bad policy. Other than that, I don't mind it. <laughs> now, you're in a... <laughs> other than that... <laughs> Good one, David. Sarcasm, though, is still a low form of wit. But um, give me... I know you're, you're a dividend investor. You're a yield investor. You want something coming back at you, not just capital gain. Give me a stock that you own, that you've bought, that pays you a really strong dividend that's guaranteed for the future. Tell me. Well, first of all, you said the guarantee word, and, you know, we got, like, regulators and stuff watching, so I'm not going to say any dividends guaranteed. Right. Okay. I'll just simply refer to Safe. ones that have been paying for 60 years and 80 years, year over year. But I have to first tell you, it's not that we like dividends. It's that we like growth of dividends. That's the very key, important differentiator. Mm -hmm. We want companies that are growing their dividend because it tells us that there's confidence behind them growing their free cash flow, growing their business. Blackstone is a wonderful example, Stuart, of a name that it continues to grow its dividend, and you see its stock price growing with it as they keep growing their earnings. Now, every name in our portfolio we believe to be such, names that are growing that dividend through time. Boeing and Amgen have done this over the years. So I don't think dividends are at odds with capital gains. I'm arguing that it's a more reliable, lower volatility way to get capital gains. Okay. But there's a few examples for you as you go into your pre-Thanksgiving weekend, my friend. <laughs> uh, full disclosure, uh, because of your recommendation, I did buy some Blackstone, and I thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Yes, sir. See you later. <laughs> Thanks, David. All right. Thanks, We've got a Happy big... Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, and to you too, my friend.